This is part 46 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the Bootstrap Alert plugin. Creating an alert with Bootstrap is straightforward. All we need to do is create a div element with classes alert and one of these contextual state classes, alert danger, success, info and warning. Creating an alert with alert danger contextual state class will give us an alert that looks like this. Let's look at this in action. Let's create a div element with classes alert and alert danger. Inside this, let's include strong element. The alert message is going to be there is a problem submitting your form. When we reload this web page, notice we get the alert as expected. At the moment, notice there is no mechanism in place to be able to close this alert. To close this alert, we want to include this little cross button here. When we click this button, that's when we want this alert to be closed. So to get that close button inside this alert div, I'm going to include an anchor element, set its href attribute to hash. The class on this is going to be close. And we also need the data dash dismiss attribute. The value for this must be alert. And to get that little cross button displayed, I'm going to use ampersand times semicolon. Let's save our changes, reload our web page. Notice we get that little cross and when we click that, the alert will be closed. Now, another change that we want to do is on the initial page load, we want to keep this alert closed. So to keep this alert closed on the initial page load, along with these two classes, I am also going to use collapse class. So with the collapse class in place, when we reload this, notice the alert is hidden on the initial page load. Now we want a submit button on the web page and when we click this button, that's when we want to display this alert. So let's include a submit button. Let's give this button an ID. Let's call this btn submit. Let's use button classes, btn and btn primary, the text on the button is going to be submit. And let's include two break elements between the button and the alert. Let's also give our alert div an ID. Let's call it my alert. Now, when we click this button, that's when we want to show the alert. So within our jQuery ready function, let's use the jQuery ID selector, which is hash, find the button and associate click event handler. So when we click the button, that's when we want to show the alert. And if you look at this alert div, it also has got an ID. So let's use the jQuery ID selector again, find the alert and then call on that show method. Now we want to animate the alert while showing it. We want that to be slowly fading in. So I'm also going to pass fade string to the show method. So let's save our changes, reload our web page. Notice on the initial page load, we have the alert closed. When we click the submit button, we get the alert. And when we click this little cross, look at that, the alert is closed. Now, when I click on the submit button again, look at that, the alert is not displayed. That's basically because when we close the alert, it's going to be removed from the DOM. So when we click the button again, it's not going to display it. Now, if you don't want the alert to be removed from DOM, and if you want that alert to be displayed every time you click the submit button, then there are a few changes that we have to do. First, we have to remove this data dash dismiss attribute on this anchor element. Let's give this anchor element an ID. Let's call this link close. And when we click this anchor element, you know, that's when we want to close the alert, but we don't want to remove it from the DOM. So I'm going to associate a click even handler with this anchor element. So within our jQuery ready function, let's find that anchor element again using its ID and then associate click event handler. So when we click the close button within the alert there, what we want to do, we want to hide the alert instead of closing it or removing it from DOM. So when we do that, we want to be 
animating that. So again, we are passing fade string to it. Let's save our changes, reload our web page. And at this point, when we click the Submit button, we get the alert. When we click this little cross, the alert is closed. And when I click on the Submit button again, look at that, it is free displayed. All right, now let's take this alert one more step further. So here is what we want to do. When we click the Submit button, we want this alert to be displayed. And within two seconds, if I don't close this alert by clicking on this cross, you know, the alert should automatically be closed. However, within two seconds, if I click this cross, you know, the alert should be closed. So let's see how to achieve this. So after the alert is displayed, you know, by clicking the Submit button, within two seconds, if we don't close it explicitly, we want it to be closed automatically. So to be able to close that automatically within two seconds, so within the button click event handler, I'm going to use set timeout function. So we want to call a function here and execute some code. So we have an anonymous function here. All we want to do is we want to close the alert and this piece of code is going to do that for us. And we want this code to be executed within two seconds. So I'm going to specify the timeout here. We need to specify that in milliseconds, so 2000 milliseconds, which is equal to two seconds. So with this change in place, let's reload our page. And look at this, when I click the Submit button, we get the alert within two seconds. If I don't close it explicitly, it's automatically closed. However, within two seconds, if I click this, the alert is again dismissed as expected. Thank you for listening and have a great day.